Do we have a winner? Back here at Marshfield, John Russell Calvad single. The gang is here. Rick Hickman's on the field. Joe Jason will be uh, doing the action in the baseball game portion of this uh, just after 8 o'clock. Still plenty of room for you here at the corner. Marshfield. One time home of uh, the Muskegon Clippers. They were a farm club of the old New York Yankees. Elston Howard played here in this field. No kidding. And at bat for the Red Raiders is Anna Beebe. Yeah, this field used to be really enclosed. They have some pictures of it. Uh, grandstand behind us was a double deck grandstand. And uh, quite a quite a uh, structure back in the heyday. She is the, uh, a league of their own, the uh, girls' professional baseball. This Muskegon Sally's uh, played here. That's Tom Sanak. Thank you Pitch very much. Pitch is low. Rock and thank Bank, you, uh, a little bit low to uh, number three, Anna Beatty. So what is it, one and one, I believe? One and one, six to five. Three, the Anna Blue Bells have come back to take the lead, scoring Brother six three, runs three. in two innings. Nice yeah. fastball on the inside part of the plate. That is fouled away. Foul down the first baseline. One ball, two strikes now as Brocklebank ahead of the hitter, Anna Beatty, Reese Puffer. Ludington right. uh, Oriole against uh, Rocket here. Do not know if we've seen Haley throw a changeup, but this would be a nice place for her here right now. Whitney uh, James at catcher, a little bit low. So that evens a count at two balls and two strikes. Want to get that first out. Don't want to let that ba- that uh, opening uh, or that uh, leadoff hitter get on the base. Bad things happen. Five runs, six hits, seven errors for the Red Raiders. That's kind of the story of the game. Another ball, a little bit low, make, making the count full. For uh, the Blue Bells, six runs, seven hits, and two errors. Haley's been thrown low. She's got to move this pitch up a little bit. Wheels, and it's going to go to second base. Misplayed there, and we're going to have uh, Anna Beebe getting uh, to first base safely. So the uh, Red Raiders put on their leadoff uh, runner. And Rick Hickman is uh, standing by in the, near the dugout. Rick? Megan Janung coming up for the Fruitport Trojans. She's going to move on to MCC to set the groundwork for a career that will next take her either to Ferris or USC. And if I'm not mistaken, she's doing that just for simplicity. Of course, she's already a Fruitport Trojan. If she becomes a USC Trojan, <laughs> she won't even have to change the monogram on her towel. She's going in to be a dental hygienist. All right. A little bit of difference between Ferris and the USC. Huh? <laughs> yeah. And a little bit of tuition difference, too. And a little bunt in front of the plate. Throwing down to first base was the third baseman, Laura Williams, uh, over to uh, Sierra Hanchett. And a forced play is it's going to move the runner to second. So one out, runner on second for the uh, Red uh, Raiders. Fair State, tuition probably about 20000 a year <laughs> in resident. Yeah. USC non-resident. Plus uh, USC, very prestigious college, probably be 40 Priceless, right? Right, yeah. Michaela Workman swings and misses. One strike, no balls. No balls, one strike against uh, Workman, for Workman. As uh, Rocklebank working on the uh, slab for the uh, Blue Bells. Runner at second for the Red Raiders. And a shot towards the shortstop. It is fielded there, throws the first, and out at first. Moving down to third is uh, number three, Anna Beebe. So two outs now, runner at third for the Red Raiders. Six to five, the uh, Blue Bells leading, but the Red Raiders trying to even things up here with um, Aaron Jabrocki of Mason County at the plate. Right down the middle, throw snap throw down to third, but getting back safely was Anna Beebe. No balls, one strike. Take a look here, Aaron Jabrocki, she's strong, physically strong. You can tell just... By her posture, she gets a hold of it. She's going to send it in the outfield. It's the unenviable task is here in the uh, late afternoon of playing uh, left field in the sun field, and that is mm-hmm. not fun, that's for sure. Has the sunglasses on, but sometimes not that much help. One ball, one strike, and next pitch inside, backs her off. Ball gets away from uh, Whitney, but no advancement by uh, Beebe, Whitney James. Aaron standing right up on that plate. So when the pitch does come up inside, it is pretty close to her. 6-5, the uh, Blue Bells hanging on to a one-run lead here. Red Raiders trying to do something about that as they have the tie and run 90 feet away. Well, not 90 feet in baseball, but half of that in, in uh, softball. And coming home on the wild pitch, 
was uh, Anna Beebe, and she slides home safely, and we are now tied at six. So Aaron Jaraki does the job, gets the run home, and Beebe with a good hustle. Still, uh, still at the plate. physician specialists, and a coordinated approach to care available only from a top health system. From diagnosis to treatment to recovery, discover a complete range of care that gives you greater possibilities closer to home. To find out more about our exceptional care, visit spectrumhealth.org slash Gerber. At Mona Shores, we inspire excellence, build character, and impact the future. This is Superintendent Dave Peden. To our graduating class of 2013, we congratulate you for your academics, leadership, and accomplishments. Their legacy is the foundation for many exciting years ahead. Don't forget to listen to our radio show, Looking Inside the Mona Shores Schools, each Saturday at 9 a.m. and visit us online at Mona Shores. Here at Marsh Field, and we have a game here, 6-6. Six to six. six runs, six hits, and seven errors for the uh, Red Raiders. Six runs, seven hits, three errors for the uh, Blue Bells as we are at the bottom of the sixth inning. Coming and to bat for the Blue Bells is Peyton Berkman. She's from Hesperia. Still on the plate is Cammie Prater from Clinton. We're going to go to Rick Hickman. Ricker. And Peyton plans to attend Eastern Michigan University. Don't always hear that a lot on this part of the state, going to Ypsilanti. And she's going to go into pre-vet. So you might be uh, coming back to West Michigan to take care of some of our farm animals. Cammy Prater on the uh, slab for the uh, Red Raiders. Ball outside. Berkman from Hesperia. Leans in. And inside pitch fought off and is fouled away. One ball, one strike. You know, I tell you, Rick Hickman, you know, he talks about how great of an athlete he was in high school, college, and cowers away from that with foul ball. Uh, it's, that's not a tennis ball. Oh, see. yeah.
Great time. Mm-hmm. Another foul there by uh, Bronco Bank. So Bronco Bank staying alive here. Run around first for the uh, Blue Bells. Six to six. No outs. Cami again fighting off another one is Bronco Bank. Staying alive here. Yeah. Wasn't that bad for her? Hanging tough in the box there. And Cammy's like, my goodness, I've been all over the plate. She's been low, inside, low, outside, high inside, high outside. Trying to uh, just get that last strike. They're producing out here, and she can't. Low pitch, and it is fielded by the third baseman. He's going to try to get it to second, and out at second. Nice bang-bang play there by number four for the Red Raiders, Megan uh, Gunyan. And she fired it over to second, got the force out. So runner on first now for the Blue Bells with one out here in this uh, bottom of the sixth. Gunyan with a big arm. She had a play earlier in this game with the long throw over to first. And uh, I'll tell you what, she's probably got the best arm we've seen here so far tonight. Coming up now, I believe it's Kaylee Moffitt. Yes, it is. Little uh, drive towards shortstop. Passed a diving. Uh, the diving shortstop goes into the uh, outer grass there of the infield. And we have runners on first and second as Moffitt gets to uh, first base. So, again, the uh, Blue Bells kicking up their heels here. We have a 6-6 tie at the bottom of the sixth. And uh, coming up to bat for the uh, Blue Bells is uh, Alicia Kalinske. Pitch is low in the dirt. Nice stop there by the catcher. That's been uh, Alstein's. One ball, no strike. Runners at first and second for the Blue Bells. Six to six, trying to get the lead here. Cammy Prater fires and a swing and a miss. Got her to chase a ball outside. Good fastball. One ball, one strike. And another swing and a miss for yeah. Alicia Kalinsky. Went right back to the same pitch. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Well, she go there again. Let's see. And she does. Ball strike number three, and Kalinsky strikes out. All three times painted the outside corner. Rick, what do you have? Brooke Morris stepping up to the plate again. And, of course, her memory is one of our great sports memories because her junior year, the Shelby Tiger basketball team made it all the way to the Breslin Center before bombing out in the semifinals. And, boy, that would certainly be near the top of any young lady's list. Sure is. When you mention Shelby, you usually mention basketball in there somewhere, that's for sure. Yeah. So Rodriguez, though, with football, he's had him uh, playing well here the last few years. One ball, no strike, and uh, second pitch by Prater. This one's called strike. So evens a count. At one, at one ball, one strike. Runners first and second for the Blue Bells. We're tied at six, bottom of the sixth inning. Prater wild, winds and fires, and another ball, two balls and one strike. A little high outside. Brooke Morse lays off of that one. She's at the plate. And low, going to third is the runner, and she is safe, gets in behind the tag. And so both runners move up now, second and third. I thought they had her. The throw was down there in time, just uh, couldn't quite snap the tag on her. And uh, base runner gets down to third base. And now we have a strike call. It's the inside corner of the plate. Nice pitch. Even to count at two and two. Nice pitch by Cammie Prater. It's Kaylee Moffitt at third base, by the way. Made the nice move to get in there. And inside, and swinging and missing, was Brooke Moore. So the uh, the threat is alleviated. So after six innings of play, we go to the top of the seventh. We're tied at six. You're listening to high school softball. It's the Marshfield All-Star Classic on 97.5 Sunny FM.